Hello guys, this is Shields. Welcome to yet another episode of OSR Tactics. Today we're going to be playing more white box medieval adventure game and today's scenario is going to be a dungeon skirmish. So with that being said, let's catch you up to speed with the events of the current campaign right now. So we are exploring a dungeon beneath the keep on the borderlands and my characters have just reached the second floor of that dungeon. And I'm going to go ahead and get into the narration, but this area is going to be where our battle is currently taking place at this T intersection. So let me go ahead and flip to my notes and get you caught up to Alrighty, speed. So this battle for today is taking place on turn two. The party has explored a western passage where they came across nine hobgoblins traversing from the south. The monsters were caught by surprise along with the party and they attacked each other in the confusion. With that being said, looking at our battle here, we have our T intersection where we have the player party advancing forward. We've got a handful of hireling mercenary soldiers, my level one fighter, Dragon, who is wearing plate armor and wields a longbow. We have a torch bearer that's providing up to 30 feet of light. So starting from here, this is about the current visibility right now of the party. And then in the very back here, we have Oris, our wizard. Alrighty, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into our initiative rules. The translucent dice here will represent the monsters, and they have rolled a six. And the party has rolled a four. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the first Alrighty, So before we begin, just a little uh, rules clarification here. This combat will be a man-to-man -man fantastic combat. And the rules of that is the only characters on the board that have hit points are going to be the player characters, which are the fighter and magic user. Everyone else will take hits based on their hit dice. So that means as long as one hit is scored on any of these guys or any of the hirelings, they will be killed instantly without needing to roll damage. So let's start in the first phase of combat, which is the movement phase of which the hobgoblins have the initiative. So as far as visibility goes, the hobgoblin leader is the only person with any visibility. So he will charge into the fighter and he will make an attack in the movement phase since he is charging. And he rolled a three, which is a miss. And then uh, the hobgoblins will advance 40 feet. So three inches here, one inch into there. And then we will advance everyone else forward. And they will be cutting off movement from the player party. So in that case, we are going to move to ranged attacks. And for this ranged attack, we have our fighter who can make a longbow shot against the charging hobgoblin. And rolls a one, which will be a miss, and he loses one arrow. So then we'll be moving on to the melee phase, where we have a hobgoblin who can attack a man-at-arms and does not hit on eight. He will need a 13 or more to hit. So now we're moving on to the next round. A slight movement in this next round. We're going to move our torchbearer and have him change spots with that spearman in the back for reinforcements. And we're gonna check our lighting again. So we have 30 feet of light, which is enough to cover up about this much and grant visibility to the human party. And then we're going to declare a spell. We're going to declare casting a sleep spell by the magic user, which will take effect in the beginning of the next round. 
And then now we are moving on to ranged weapons where our fighter can make a, another ranged attack with his longbow. Scoring a 10 and missing, losing an arrow. So then we are moving into melee where we have the hobgoblin leader and a hobgoblin attacking. So I'm going to roll for the leader first. Misses. And then for the second hobgoblin, roll a 1. So no hits. So then we're going to go ahead and do a counter with that man of arms right there. And that will be another miss. So then we're going to the next round where sleep has been casted. Hobgoblins in white box are a one plus one hit dice monster. So consulting our sleep chart here, the number affected by the sleep spell is 2d6. So I'm going to roll our two six siders here for the amount that has fallen asleep. So we have six. Now, we, the wizard must have visibility of the enemy monsters in order for his spell to be casted. So, checking line of sight and visibility. That is four monsters that are now under a magical sleep. Now that all enemy monsters that were engaged in combat are now disengaged, and their sleeping bodies serve as obstructions in the movement area, so therefore the hobgoblins are not able to advance. We will make adjustments to our positioning. So I will trade places between the fighter and the magic user, and then we will launch a charge on these monsters, wiping them out since they um, were doing fantastic combat. So a hit, as long as the monster are out of hit dice and they are no longer alive. So we're going to remove these two figures from the board as they were charged and they cannot interact because they are in a magical slumber. So therefore, um, we are going to stop right there for movement and this will take us into the next round of combat where hobgoblins will have initiative again so the start of the next round in the movement phase we're going to move a hobgoblin here and then we're going to cue these guys up right here um, the hobgoblin will have a chance to wake up his friend from the magical slumber. So he will be able to rise and be active in the next round. And, um, we are going to queue up for some melee come around this corner and perform an attack onto that hobgoblin in the melee phase. But before we get there, we're just going to move our people forward more to gain more visibility. And we will begin with the melee phase where this hobgoblin is going to attack one of the men at arms. And rolls a 15, which is enough to take one of these guys out the table as a casualty. So, um, flipping back over, we have a counterattack from this man in arms. Rolling a 19, which is enough to slay one of the hobgoblins. And then uh, we have this attack here, which will hit automatically and will kill the hobgoblin as the hobgoblin is under magical slumber and cannot react to anything. So now this should take us to the next round of movement where the hobgoblins will attempt to take more ground and push forward like that. And as far as the human positioning goes, we will keep our positions. In the ranged phase, my fighter will make a melee attack towards one of, or not a melee, a ranged attack, sorry, with the longbow to one of the hobgoblins. 
and he will miss his attack, which will bring us to the melee phase, where we have a hobgoblin attacking a mercenary, and the mercenary is killed, and then we have another hobgoblin attacking this mercenary, and will not do any damage. This hobgoblin will attack this mercenary, and will not do any damage. So then we flip over to the dungeoneers, and these two men at arms will both make an attack. That was a cocked die, so that will be a miss. And then going and checking armor class real quick to make sure that's right. So for a hobgoblin, their AC is 14. So this hobgoblin will be defeated. So now that the hobgoblins have lost more than 50% of their force, they must make morale checks. Morale numbers aren't assigned to any of the creatures in White Box, so I'm going to arbitrate that the Hobgoblins have a morale score of 8. So on an 8 or higher, they will flee this battle. So on a 12, they will take their movement phase, and they will retreat. So he retreats off the board. He will retreat to the very edge and then he will have him retreat and he will retreat as well and let me see if i can get a charge attack in here with the dungeoneers so So the, I gotta make sure that he gets, that he can still grant them visibility. And then we can launch a charge attack. Okay. So uh, the Dungeoneers have decided to launch a charge attack to the Hobgoblins. So these two will have to see if they are stabbed in the back by a spear or not. So that is two misses right there. So um, we're going to flip back over. Since they are currently running away, they can't really do anything because they broke morale. So that will give our characters another... Well, actually, I almost gave them another melee attack. But that's wrong because they attacked in the movement phase by charging. So we're going to go over to the next round where we'll have to make another morale score roll. So on a five, they will turn around and they will hold their ground. And then um, they will begin a melee attack. Before we switch phases, though, I want to move my fighter here so that he can make a ranged attack targeting this guy in the very back who is not engaged. So we're going to go ahead and make the roll. So on a 13... Fighters get a... So he's level 1, so he doesn't get a plus 1 to hit just yet. So unfortunately, this is going to be a missed attack. So then we're flipping to the melee phase, where these two hobgoblins will make an attack. So we're going to go ahead and roll for that. So that's a kill... And that's a kill. So they kill these two men in arms. And we are now into the next round where it is movement. So this hobgoblin will charge, charge. Well, before any of that will happen, 
morale test. So rolling a seven, so they don't lose their morale. So we have a charging here. And then we'll have this guy move forward. So we have two attacks. So that's a miss. And that is a kill right here. So in the range phase, my fighter could attempt to make a range attack. Rolling a 15, scoring a kill on this hobgoblin. And no other melee could be had. So now we are back in the movement phase where a morale score is needed for not just the hobgoblins, but also uh, my hirelings. So they pass their morale and we're going to have to make a loyalty test for my hirelings. So my fighter, I believe, has a plus one charisma. So first we'll check the charisma score to see if there's any bonuses or modifiers or anything like that. So I'm just flipping over to their character sheets. So, um, no. So 13 and 14 charisma is not enough for a uh, charisma bonus. So we're going to flip over to the hireling loyalties. As soon as I can find it. Yep, right here. So table um, looks like we have a 3d6 roll. So we're gonna go ahead and make that right now. So loyalty for the uh, mercenary and the torchbearer. So that would be a nine. So on a nine, their loyalty is average. <coughs> Apologies. So we'll just do a standard morale roll. A bear will probably have a morale of five. And then the mercenary might have a morale of, say, seven. So the bearer will not break morale, but the mercenary will break morale this turn and actually uh, begin to fall back a bit. So back the way he came, like so. And then that brings us to the free movement between the player characters. So I'm, my fighter doesn't have a melee weapon, unfortunately. So I'm just going to just try to make a ranged attack. But the hobgoblins will get to move first since they do have initiative. So we have a charging to the bearer, and then we have a charging move on my fighter. The torch bearer has an AC of 10 because he has no armor. So we're gonna go ahead and roll that. So on a 13, the torch bearer was slain. So now there's a torch on the ground. Let's see here. So we'll mark this as the light source and then we'll set it to three for 30 feet of distance um and charge move on the fighter will not hit because he has plate mail so we are moving to a range attack where i'll make a range attack with my longbow hit and slay a hobgoblin and then we will go to the next round where uh, morale checks have to be made. So morale for the hobgoblin has broken. And this hobgoblin will retreat off the board, which will conclude the battle. So as you can see, the Dungeoneers have taken extremely heavy losses this combat round, this wandering monster encounter. Almost all the hirelings except one mercenary are now dead. So at that point, I think it's best for my party to pack up their bags and head back to the sanctuary town 
so that they can recoup their losses. But this has been OSR Tactics. My name is Shields, and I'll see you in the next battle.